This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the best or worst podcast, and I am Koji. And I am Martin. And what this is, is up? What's up? And this is episode number three zero. This is a big three zero. Ooh, so. Big three zero. Yeah, so this yeah, is exciting awesome. podcast. And um, and I'm I think, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one too. This is uh, this is one of my this is one of my favorite people. We're, we'll talk about that in, in a second. But how are you? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm good. I am good. Good. You know, it's been a. Uh, and you know, I said I didn't drive over to your house this time, but you know, I'm good. You know, yeah, we, good. we just went. We did a sort of a. Um, quick run to the store yeah all oh, got all got all you know masked up and everything else but uh now we're back so now you're back yeah yeah we're just still we're running all the time we're doing our thing and i'm not shaving or cutting my nails or anything and it's driving everyone oh, oh you know what i'm glad you brought that, <laughs> glad you brought that up dude what the hell those fingernails man let me yeah. see those fingernails put them to the camera <laughs> oh, a gangster anyways well let's <sighs> let's let's talk to our guest we have so a guest wrong. here we have our guest we here do so. So obviously this is Taki uh, Kitamura or Takahiro Kitamura. Sorry, um, he's a. I met him. I met him when I was working at the Japanese American National Museum, and I, I'm not. I'm not just saying this because you're on, but out of all the shows I ever did, it was it was the best. The show that I was most proud of, for sure, because it it really pushed kind of the museum in uh, directions that I thought we needed to go. So I was really excited about that, and, and I was really proud of kind of how it, how how you guys made it come out, and and it was something that that I've been you know really excited about, and also you know and and obviously uh, Taki's a world famous tattoo artist. I don't have a tattoo from you yet, but I'm gonna I still have to get a tattoo from you, so I'm gonna do that. Man, somewhere. your your stuff is awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you. I and, was wow. And he has a, a store in uh, San Jose, Japan, town called State of Grace Tattoo, right? Which is really exciting, and every time I've come by, I've been there a couple times. You haven't been there, but that's okay, because <laughs> I've been randomly like on a Sunday afternoon or something, so it's all good. Um, but uh, but Taki, how are you? I'm good. You know, I think like everyone, like sort of just uh, dealing with this new situation we're in, and um, hoping for a quick resolution. And uh, you know, I, th I think uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I think that's kind of probably been the topic that everyone's really sick of, but everyone's still talking about is the whole COVID pandemic. But yeah. yeah. And I think like, but you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Like, you know, like I, I can't really complain. There's a lot of people that have it a lot worse than me. And so, you know, I'm grateful that at this stage, like, you know, it's, you know, I think times like this make you think about, you're lucky about what you, what's going good for you rather than. Oh yeah. So true. So true. Um, so true. But yeah. And it's funny you mentioned state of grace. Cause you know, we closed our doors on March 16th and I go there once a week to pick up mail and it's really sad. It's, it's like, you know, I kind of just look around. It's like, Oh, like, um, my wife started a, a group text thread with all, everyone that we work with. And, and it's like, you know, Oh wow. We actually all miss each other. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so, I mean, we, we're social animals. Like even my dogs, like, you know, they miss the dog park and you know, when they see another dog, they're like, Oh, we want to go say hi to the dog. So, you know, I think like, um, and I think also, too, as a person, like, it's funny, Koji, because the way you introduced me is, like, as a tattooer, but I do believe that I think a lot of us in, you know, American society and probably in the world, like, uh, our, our career um, defines our identity a yeah. bit. And I, I see this, like, you know, just talking to other friends and through social media, too, where I think everyone's a little bit like, ah, like, you know, like, this whole entity that I devoted my life to that was my everything is now put on hold. And, you know, and like you can paint and draw and do all the, these projects you can, but it, you know, I think we all want to get back to work. Um, yeah, we do. At the same time, we all want to do it safely. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, well, definitely t tell me about, you know, I, I think um, I've, I've heard all your stories, obviously. I know, I know a lot about you, but why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, um, when did you, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Well, you know, um, if you go back to when I was a child, like, and I have the drawings to prove it, I, I was definitely the kid with the crayons or the yeah. paint or whatever, clays. Um, my parents encouraged art uh, when I was a kid, like, even to the point of, like, you know, making me take classes. Not making me, rather, but, you know, there was part of the uh, extracurricular. Um, somewhere, I'd say, like, uh, around sixth or seventh grade, getting into skateboards and then starting to get interested in tattoos, which were, you know, still very like off limits at the time. They were very taboo, but um, I got introduced to some of Ed Hardy's Tattoo Time books. And I just like, I was like, man, that is the coolest. And I think there was also an added layer for me being a Japanese American. I was actually born in Japan. 
Um, I've lived in the United States since I was five. So, I, you know, I, I identify more as an American, but, you know, I speak Japanese and I, culturally there's some things that I'm in tune with. And, you know, I, I remember seeing things of like tattoos and just thinking like, wow, that's so cool. And I think there's that added layer. I think a lot of people, um, you know, like, I love America. It's, you know, like, this is my home. This is my country. But at the same time, there's that part of me that's like wants to connect with that larger culture that you're from. And for me, the tattoo was like the coolest way to do it, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, which, and then I'm not alone in this. I mean, there's like, you know, Japanese tattooing is probably the most exported Japanese art form or craft ever. Like, you know, you can go to any city in any country, you know, I don't care where you go, you will find somebody of any race, culture, ethnicity, doing Japanese tattoos very seriously, like devoting their life to it. Like it's definitely become like um, a worldwide phenomenon. Whereas like, you know, if you went somewhere, you wouldn't find like a woodblock printer or a kimono maker or something like that. So, <laughs> you know, I think it was very easy for me to identify with that. Um, but, but, you know, interestingly enough, my entry into tattooing is more from like punk rock and things like that, skateboarding. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, you know, I was uh, looking at some of your stuff. I don't know how you guys do it. You know, you use a needle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The uh, woo. Yeah. It, looks, it looks it looks like the end of a harpoon. I, I, I love the spearfish. <laughs> so I'm looking at that thing and I'm thinking, how does it not catch in the skin? Obviously, it has no barbs or it doesn't, but that's. I mean, ideally, right? Like, on <laughs> 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 a good day. No, but, Remember yeah. when we did uh, when we did the live demonstration at the museum? Mm -hmm. I had to go through so much to get that. You know, like those oh, guys, but, yeah. like the, the live the that was the issue for people with, like the the health people. They were oh, like, that, but you had to be. Everyone had to. Be, Everyone had to be wanting to like volunteer. No, I mean, no, you, but no, you, it, it, yeah, the volunteering part is not the issue. It's the, it's the, I was like the people, they didn't, they didn't understand it really. I don't think that. <laughs> They're like, Koji really, I'll do it. <laughs> Wait, what is that? <laughs> no, Koji really went through a lot. Cause I mean, Kip invited me into the project cause the director then Greg Kimura was like, let's do a show on tattooing. And he asked Kip and Kip's like, well, let's, you know, let's have my friend Taki curate it. So he really got the ball rolling. And then Koji had to deal with, and I think, um, you know, I think what's true in most communities, like you, you sort of have like new generations. And um, we even had at that point, I, I believe like a certain generation of people had signed a petition against the show to try to block it. <laughs> I remember that. What? And those, <laughs> wait, wait, but, but those same people by the end of the opening were the biggest fans. Yeah. So, you know, you want to talk about like, um, like- What were they expecting? Like, it just, you know, there's like so many stigmas and I, and I feel like sometimes like, you know, like, the, the, the sometimes the worst critics like the worst critics for the japanese tattooing you know community it, it comes from japan like the country itself hates tattooing you know it's like so and i think there's but, still that stigma even with japanese americans even though we're here and we've been here for like five six generations now sure you know i think there's that like sort of like stigma that the, this is criminal this is taboo and then you know ironically though with younger japanese americans <laughs> like we um, we get a lot of people coming they want their family crest they want to get something like something to identify with that culture has it always been that way in Japan, though? Is because I, I feel like I don't know. I, I again, I'm, I'm probably showing my ignorance, but I thought, you know, you know, even back in the in the samurai days, weren't tattoos considered like a badge of you know a badge of honor or a sign of a sign of a sign of experience? Am I am I way off on that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> no, I, I oh. and, and like I mean, obviously, like I have you know, I didn't. Uh, live in those days, but I've done. God a, damn you, Tom a, Cruise! Just with ass movies. Research, but I think, like, uh, like with the samurai class, because like you know, everyone thinks of samurai like these brave, gallant warriors and whatnot, and there's a certain degree of truth to that. But also, they were sure. the ruling class of Japan for many years, and yeah. there are individual cases of samurai that had tattoos. In fact, uh, you know, there was a TV show that I used to watch where the magistrate at the end of the the show, before he whoops like ten people, he whips off his kimono and shows this tattoo. That's actually based on a real person. Um, so there's a, there's a few random, like, uh, you know, cases, I guess, of a uh, tattoo, but ironically, um, when the country, I, I don't want to get too much into like the long history lesson here, but when the country went into peacetime in the Edo period, all of a sudden the samurai had nothing to do. So in a lot of ways, they became like the oppressors of the people. They were at the, you know, top of the class chain, so they could do whatever they wanted. And then, so from the sort of the, the people came like this class of warriors that fought against them. And these guys were like, you know, very flamboyant, had tattoos and kind of mocked the samurai. And those were sort of- I like, think that's what I was thinking of. Like, people's heroes. So yeah. I think, um, but, you know, I think that it's a very complicated history. I think a lot of it stems from the fact that the government used to use tattoos to mark criminals. So- in Oh, fact, that'll do it. Yeah, the word Irazumi comes from that. 
And so there's even tattooers that still won't use that word because of the connotations from hundreds of years ago. Um, interestingly enough, when Japan opened to the West in the Meiji period, and, and this is kind of funny because Japan being an island nation um, and sort of secluded, it did get to develop this really interesting culture. You know, obviously variations of Indian culture, uh, Chinese culture, you know, everything that kind of migrated was like adopted in. But at the same time, like when they opened to the West, they didn't want to look barbaric to the Westerners. So they made it mm -hmm. illegal for Japanese to have tattoos. And then like, you know, like ironically, like they had like, you know, the crown prince of Russia, European noble nobility, they all came over like, hey, we want to get tattooed. So then the government shifted focus and said, okay, well, we'll let, you know, tattooers in Yokohama tattoo the Westerners at the port kind of thing. So they made it legal for the non-Japanese. So it's just like, I mean, it's very governmental. Just do yeah. whatever suits you best and none of it makes sense. Mm. You know, so. But there's, I mean, still, wow. there's, still, there's still a stigma though in Japan, right? I mean, there are a lot um, of places, yeah. Like stigma. you can't go to like the, uh, you can't go to the baths and stuff sometimes, right? Yeah, and they've, like, they've actually um, arrested tattooers. Although, you know, if it's just for tattooing, who knows? It's technically illegal right now. So, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a different world yeah. as far as that goes. Which wow. is which is ironic because you know so many of the people want Japanese tattoos. I think right there. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same back then. You know, people yeah. love it. Like, uh, you know, and I mean, this is the uh, the irony. Like, you know, going to Samoa, and like, you know, talking to the head of state, talking to the prime minister, and he was just like, "I love your tattoos," and I was like, "Woo!" You know, like this place is great. You know, so <laughs> different cultures see things differently. You know, yeah. and uh, like as far as Japan goes, like it's 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 pretty taboo still. Well, in America, it's opened up a lot in the last, oh. like, 20, 20 years, right? Now oh, my every, God. Everybody has tattoos. tattoos. Yeah. 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 It's pretty yeah, funny. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, so I have to ask you. So, you know, when you guys opened back up, typically, what was the wait to get a tattoo from you in particular back, you know, before it closed? Um, you know, it kind of... Because I'm just assuming you couldn't just walk in and say, hey... I mean, and part of that's like the, I, I do try to keep a waiting list, um, but part of it's also just because the style of, of work I do, like let's yeah. black piece, it's not the kind of thing I can just pull off the wall and throw on somebody really quickly. Like, no, sure. Absolutely. Really consultation, you know, like so, and most of the people in our shop work in this type of manner. So we're kind of more of an appointment shop. Like I'm usually like six months to a year-ish or so, but I also do have like um, specific things that I do and don't do. You know, I think, um, and you know, after 22 years of doing this, I feel like, you know, it's it's my right to choose what I want to do. Also, yeah, of course. I think there's different um, schools of thought. Like some tattooers feel like you should be able to do anything, whatever they do. You know, walk walk through the door, and that's fine. But for me, I've always felt like you know, from the start, I want to do Japanese tattooing, and if I try to get too diluted, then I won't be able to focus on that. You yeah. Know? And there's even times when like I feel like doing stuff like, and I, I like you know, like with Koji, for example. I know Koji has like a lot of different types of things he does and like for me sometimes I feel like if I'm curating a museum show or writing a book or whatever maybe it's taking time away from my tattoo art and it's making me less of a tattooer but then on the other hand it's like it's also making me more like a better rounded person and yeah. also, and I also think that inspiration especially artistic inspiration isn't like it's not just like a visual like there's so many different ways you can be inspired so yeah no, like, absolutely. Like, that's part yeah. of it you know like working with jan i'm like it was actually koji you know i'm not just saying this like he was like one of the you know really it was a pleasure to work with you um you know and it just so i think when you meet people that are doing stuff and like active and it, it's that's the kind of thing that gets me going yeah and, and the only reason martin asked that question is he want he wants a butterfly on the bottom of his lower back <laughs> Another one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want one to match my name below Koji's navel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, on that note, on that note. Okay, so, Martin. Oh, wait, I, 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 you know, because I'm sorry. I wanted to bring up one last thing because okay. you made a really good point early, Taki. Um, when you talk about Japanese art having, you know, tattoos having permeated, in, you know, everywhere, and it's so true. And I, and I say that because, there are so many people out there that want to get their first tattoo, and it's always a Japanese symbol of some kind. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, every, every you know, everywhere you turn, someone's got a Japanese symbol on the back of their neck, sure. you, know, the, you know, at, their, at the base of their, you know, spine. It's, you know, even or, in the... In the black, or Chinese. In the, you know, Sometimes they're Chinese writing. Too. Chinese. See, right. That's my point, but they all want to say it's Japanese. They never say it's Chinese. Well, well the Japanese writing Chinese comes thing. from the Chinese. <laughs> the kanji, it's kanji, right? But, 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 you know, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm talking about people who are, you know, lay people who don't know any better. Yeah. Right, um, right. They just say, oh, you know, Anyway, no, no, yeah, yeah, I think I do, and it's something that, like, you know, like obviously, like, uh, you know, it's funny because I, there was a, we had a run of different tattoo-related shows in the Bay Area, 
And so I ended up being on panels at the Contemporary Jewish Museum, the Asian Art Museum, and then, uh, and then again at the Asian Art Museum. And three different times that I spoke, um, questions of cultural appropriation came up. And, you know, that's like such a huge topic. Like, I'm not even trying to get into it. But I, that's I think, Koji's wheelhouse. <laughs> but I think, like, there's a certain point to where, like, um, you know, and we discuss these things about who has the right to do what and who has the right to get what. And I think, you know, our, a lot of the Japanese position has been is like, you know, you like the art and you want to get it cool. You know, like, I, I think um, there's not really too much within Japanese tattooing that I feel like we need to hold back from other people. Like, like it's like, you know, like, I, 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 for me, it's more like I look at intent. Like, is a person respectfully getting this? Or they're just ripping it to throw on some clothing design and make much money and not even care what it means kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Or they don't, even, they don't even try to, like, understand. Like, actually, because I have Arabic writing tattoo, and all the, um, all the Muslim people who read it are, like, impressed because it's from the Quran. Right. <laughs> they're like, and I knew, I mean, obviously, I know where it comes from, and I know the meaning of it. And, but, it, but it's interesting because I did, the first time I remember someone who was, not, who was a Muslim saw it, I was, I was kind of freaking out because I was, like, thinking that it's going to be the same thing when I see, like, people with Asian writing. <laughs> And and there's, just, no, there's no right <laughs> or wrong. I mean, you're, you're gonna find you're gonna find someone that's gonna be offended. Yeah, it's of course. Happen. Yeah, and that's their yeah. right. I mean, you know, I think that's that's the. Yeah. And this is a. I, I guess the point I was gonna make about this is like every time I get asked that question, though, it's almost like someone just wants a pass. Like, well, what I'm doing is cool, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. Kind of, like nothing's that simple. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like I'm just one member of one larger community. Like I don't speak. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's true of a lot of things. You know? but, but what I love about you know people always try to because they, they don't think I know what it means or, you know, it's always like, why would I put this on my body if I didn't know, if I didn't know what it meant or, you know, like if I didn't know where it comes from or the meaning behind it, it's not just a random words I put together. Right. That's my big issue with the Asian writing on a kanji or the, the Chinese um, sure. writing is that it's like, well, no, no to self. I'll never put anything on my body that this, you know, that Koji no, no. hasn't approved. No, no. But it's like, because a lot of times it's just like, I want to be like happy guy. And they just put the, the kanji for happy and guy. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's not how it works. That's not like, the, <laughs> not really, you know, when you put different symbols together, it changes how you read it. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, it's not the way, like that to me is like, come on, you have to try a little harder to like get the, get the right thing, you know? But, but I mean, that goes both ways. So like, yeah. I, I remember I saw a tattoo in Japan and it was a heart and the banner said truth, love. So clearly the person just typed in essentially what would be closer to yeah. the American equivalent of true love. And, and that's the other problem too, is that there's not the exact phrase in Japanese. Like I used to yeah. think when I uh, yeah I used to ask my mom like hey can you write this for me she's like no Japanese would ever say that you know, like, <laughs> you know, my mom said that all the time <laughs> that's one of the problems with, like with Google Translate is like yeah it might kind of be right but uh, you yeah. know it might like culturally and you know because there's no two cultures that translate exactly the same like you sure. have kind of sort of like that and and you do your best and but I think that's why too like when you you know if you I think sometimes there's I'm not saying you have to be from a certain culture to do a certain tattoo, but it, you should at least have some form of study or know yeah. what you're talking about, I think. Sure. You know, I, think yeah. I think with us, we can confidently say, you know, like we, in our shop too, we have two native Japanese that we've got green cards for that work with us too. So it's like, you know, like oh, that's cool. half the shop speaks Japanese, but we actually have two, like, you know, because I, I, like I said, I identify more as an American Japanese, yeah. um, but, you know, like having them there kind of like reinforces that and, you know, kind of, it's, it's easy for me to, Ask sure. for advice and whatnot. Okay. Well, Martin, well, we're, at that, well, we're at that point of the show where we ask our guest whether we want to hear the best or worst moment. What, what's your What's your thought on this? Oh man, you know what, Pataki? For me, I guess it's got to be the best because here's the thing. I mean, with this whole COVID nineteen thing going on, and uh, you know, Ahmad Aubrey and everything else, it's like I don't need any more anything more dreary. I need some pick me ups. I seriously do. And this and is you know as I was gonna say as corny as that sounds, fuck it. I yeah, I want to hear something good. Okay. I feel like I, I feel like this pod, yeah. I feel like this podcast has gone for hours. Doc, you're a really fascinating, dude, man. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I want. I know, definitely. And I and I said that because you know, because I, I started architecture in college. I started off as an art oh. major. So yeah. Anyway, I want to hear the good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want, want the hear best. The, the best moment. Do we agree, Toji? Yeah, we agree. You know, um, I mean, the best moment is that navel tattoo. Would, would be a hundred percent when I married my beautiful wife. Oh, yeah, I mean, oh that's good ass. Actually, you know, actually right? what right before you said well, that, we were, we were about to say we were about to say the one thing that uh, that we we ask people is not to choose something that's like obviously it's when you're gonna get when you got married or when you had a kid. Yeah. You, you, uh, no, you no, a kid but, funny joke. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> or when your parents got sick or something. I mean, you know, those are all the things that are easy. Nobody has to do the disclaimer. Maybe the joke failed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. 
Um, <laughs> she, she's sitting right there, right? I know. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Uh, no, because I don't know how to operate computers. Like, she had to sign me into the Zoom thing. Like, I'm a complete tech idiot. I, I'm, I'm going to. Like, like, when I <sighs> on the iPad, I have to ask her, to say, how do I do this again? Like, because, you know, I'm, like, used to, like, hey, I'm a dinosaur. What can I say? That's <laughs> me. That's me every single day. My kid today was playing a video game on his iPad and watching Phineas and Ferb at the same time. And I'm like, he's eight. I'm like, how did you do that? He's like, he's looking at me like, dad is. Are you a dumbass? <laughs> it was like automatic for, for him. Sure. And I was like, no, kids, and, and that's like everything tech. Anyway. Like, you know, like I feel like I'm just, I've reached that age, like, you know, that my parents reached a certain point, then I reached a certain point where I just can't process new information. Um, so I actually did, you know, like when you guys invited me on this, I thought about that, like best and worst days. And what I realized is, is that it's all very fleeting. Um, I think, like, you know, like when, when you're a kid, it might be like, oh my God, the first time I, you know, learned how to Ollie. The first time I got late, the first time I graduated this, the first thing, like, you know, there was a time when I would have told you, like, maybe the Janum show was my best day, or speaking here was, you know, or getting married, or, like, certain things like that, and I think um, the whole point of this is, like, we're not lead leading stagnant lives, right? So, yeah. you know, those best days keep changing, but one thing, you know, I'm, I'm 46 years old now, so... And there's times when I think about, like, what are the kind of things that make me happy? Um, you know, and I think one of the things, like, you know, obviously, like, it's weirdly enough, my, you know, I have, like, a love-hate relationship with my work because it gives me a sense of purpose and pride and accomplishment and, and you know, pays my bills. Well, not right now, but normally. Um, but, you know, like, and then there's trying to get away from that. And what I realized is that a lot of my best memories, um, strangely or maybe not strangely, involve water. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a few of them. You know, like one is a uh, small boat sailing. Um, you know, this is a fun fact. Koji will like this one. I'm actually an Eagle Scout. Um, but, you know, I, I know, right? Yeah. And, and you know, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a dead leader. I'm a yes. dead leader for my son's Cub Scout group. Good. Eagle Scout. No, I'm going to say, no, but seriously, like, I feel like the scouting has gotten such a bad rap because, yeah, there's been a few, like, cases of these, like, you know, pedophiles that, and, and, you know, get more than a few. More than a few. I mean, we're not going to get rid of the whole Catholic religion either, right? Like, I mean, why not? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Fair enough. The, Vatican, the Vatican's gorgeous, though. I mean, but but I'm, I'm just saying, like, for me, though, like, scouting was, Pedophilia like... Pedophilia pays. Learning, like, making Sorry. campfires, like, you know, like, shooting guns, shooting bows and arrows, being the overachieving Asian kid that had tons of merit badges and got his Eagle Scout really early. But Do you hear that, Koji? Do you hear that, Koji? Do you hear <laughs> but, that? But I'm just saying, like, for me, like, like I, I remember summer camps, uh, two-person small boat sailing, you know, on Crystal Blue Lake in California... And just like you know, going full speed and then uh, purposely turning it over because you had to do that. And I mean, stuff like it was just so carefree and amazing. Um, and then like another moment that we had, like maybe my wife was working on her cookbook. Um, we were interviewing Teddy in Hawaii. And I think we were in a uh, Lanika. I, I can't remember the name of uh, the city, but we were at his aunt's house, and it was like you know, like. Uh, right on the beach and I was like on a second floor balcony overlooking the ocean and I just fell asleep there smelling the sea air and it was just like I was like that's cool you know those moments when you're like relaxed and content yeah and then and I was just thinking about this too like last year we um for my mother's uh, 70th birthday we went to Pacific Grove and you know it was like one of those moments like the house we were staying at was like right by the beach so when we walked down to the beach for to watch the sunset on the way four deer came up you know we watched them for a while then we went down and so I think, you know, the, but that best day thing is, it's fleeting. Like, you know, like I think like, um, like right now, like, like my wife and I were talking about this, like we can't wait to just go and sit in a restaurant, you know? I mean, we're not going to go protest about it, but you know what I mean? Like, like it just wants to work, you know I mean? And like I said, like, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm making jokes here because like I said, like, I'm not, you know, for me, like, I, I don't want to make light of a situation where people are dying. Like I'm very fortunate so far. Nobody I know has gotten sick. You know, like I, but by separation, I, you know, there's been a handful of people that have passed on that are friends of friends or relatives of friends. And, you know, so I, I you know, I'm not trying to be like the funny guy here at an inappropriate time, but I just think like that your best day is it's very fleeting. And I think what is important to you and what is best changes. Like, for example, like I, I bet you if you asked Koji, he would have said it's when his son was born. And then maybe it'd be when his son gets a certain belt doing jujitsu. And then maybe it'd be when his son scores the winning Stanley Cup goal for the San Jose Sharks against the LA Kings or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> you just never know. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I planned that one, Koji. I know. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Koji's taking the hits today, man. Wow. <laughs>
Have you ever asked, asked Koji about his Cub Scout story? Whoa, uh oh, is it, is it, can you air it? I mean, is this, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. It's, it's just pretty. I swear to God, man, Koji has so many my, stories. My Boy Scout leader, when I, was, when, I was, when I was a kid, my Boy Scout leader and I had a, had a thing, a, a, a problem with each other. Uh -huh. And, uh, in one of the fights I had with him, I said, what are you doing here? Why are you here? You have no, there's no reason for you to be here because you have no kids and you have no friends. You have nobody here. And then, um, and then I obviously got kicked out. And then it turned out a couple years later that he was uh, molesting kids. Oh, good eye. Yeah, because I was like, it didn't make, did make sense for him to be there. It just, yeah. it was like, it was like, it's like, you know, people ask me to coach a basketball team. And I'm like, wait, my son's not on this basketball team? Why would I want to coach this team? I have no, I have I know, zero, right? I have zero interest in working with kids. You know what? I get that way. Like, um, sometimes you'll see people at the dog park that don't have dogs. Oh, that's weird. You feel like, okay, maybe this person just wants to, but then sometimes I'm like, are you trying to steal someone's dog? It's like when someone comes up. Yeah. And like, oh, those dogs are worth this much. I'm like, whoa, get the fuck. Yeah. Out of here. <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's, that's happened to me. And when I was in Chicago and I had my dog, we, we had, you know, and you know, dog owners are clicky, mm -hmm. you know, they're real clicky. And if someone shows up and just standing there without a dog, we eventually go, dude, what's up it's like why are you yeah no it it's makes weird. sense i mean that's one of the signs of a of a child predator is is for them to put them in positions to be with children without yeah. without a reason to be there yeah sure, yeah sure. i mean if you're getting hired or something then obviously that's like something else but yeah. if it's like you know you're just volunteering i like i have no interest in playing with kids unless it's like my kid you know because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he rocks and the scout masters are uh, fathers of the scouts. That, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. right? Because you're like, for me, like coaching my son's basketball team, it's like I'm gonna be there anyway, so, <laughs> right? Like, so have I'm, you ever met? Have you ever met Coach's kid? No, I don't think he's ever met. Uh, I just uh, dude, coolest really kid on the planet, man. Yeah. But so, uh, cool. so you know, I'm really, I love, I loved your, I loved your best day. I mean, best, uh, best moments because I mean, what do you think it is about the water? I mean, is there something about water that that Really you, know, and, 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 you could get all psychological about it like oh the womb and like <laughs> no bro but it's true though right like you do i'm right it, there with you man we go yeah. to we go to hawaii every year mm -hmm. and and i i love to fish and i you know, swim and snoop, scuba and snorkel you're right and by the way i think you're talking about lahaina was that yeah, where yeah, you were yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah you're talking about teddy teddy's restaurant no, no, no. It's a friend of ours that his name just happens to be Teddy. But oh, because like, the restaurant owned by guy named Teddy on the beach there, like you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Like we go to Santa Cruz a lot. Like I think there's a few things about the water. One, I think the the movement of it is very calming, and I think you know I think there's a certain like not to go off on like a whole like cosmic trip here, but you know like there's a certain like vibration of the earth that you're more in tune with. But the other thing too that I think is important with the ocean is like you kind of realize how insignificant you are. It's sort of like looking up at the stars you realize that like, you're just a speck of nothing. Yeah. Um, and, and for that matter, if you're ever in the water and you get tossed around, it really reminds you of how weak you are, you know, especially Ooh, if you're yeah. a trap swimmer, you know, but like, I'm just saying like, you know, I think there's a certain grounding thing there where it's, it's weird because it's like humbling in the good way. Like, it's not like someone's like sitting here, like making you feel like really bad about yourself, but rather you're being reminded that you're just like this little speck in this larger thing. And just try not to be an asshole, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that's a, that's a way better answer no. than, uh, than a psycho like a, a psychological reason why water. I mean, that's that that that's really powerful. I think. I mean, that's why. Um, I don't know if you know, but my my company is called Little Nalu Pictures, and Little Nalu means little wave in Hawaiian, and it's the idea that a little wave could, you know, um, we shape continents, right? Little waves shape continents. Little waves can make like over time, over a course of of centuries, and millennia they they could they break down rocks and they do all that stuff yeah. right so i i do think that they're, i think that's really really powerful um I could, yeah. question actually i'm gonna ask martin like so uh because koji does have this edge to him and you know this right like he's yeah. like he'll sit there quietly whatever but he's 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 got his his snarky edge and also like he also does have that edge and um but <laughs> would, would koji have been a 442 or a no-no boy do you think you know I don't know if you know. Do you know? Uh, you know. Okay, so uh, during internment, there was uh, these. Uh, no, 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 oh, no. You know what I mean? Coach, you read your book, dude. <laughs> That's right. You did read my book. Okay. He, wasn't, uh, he wasn't just being polite, Coach. He actually read it. He read the book. Man, okay. that hurts me, dude. <laughs> I, don't know. I assume people don't know. I assume people don't know. That's why. How many times did I tell you how awesome that thing was, dude? And I learned so much. Hello, Koji. Right. I'm listening. Uh -huh. How many times did I tell you I love that book? Millions of times. I appreciate on a, it. On a, on a side note, what's a 442 again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think Koji would have been, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Mm. I know the answer to this. Maybe a no-no maybe a boy? That's, that's what I was, I'm thinking. That's what I would think. I think yeah. you would have been a no-no boy. There's no way I would have been a no-no boy. 
Really? Yeah. I mean, like my grandfather was a no-no. Um, and my, so my whole family was no-nos, but I, I definitely, I, I, I know myself well enough. I would have been a, a, a I would have been a, a four four two, and a lot. I mean, and a lot of the reasons is I knew my brother would would have been a no-no, and because he would have been a no-no, then um, I think I would have felt a lot more obligated to be. To be a but man. but you didn't know it would have been your state of mind then though, because hindsight's twenty twenty. No, because I. I, I was like, I was all military when I was a kid. <laughs> I was really? very pro military. Yeah, I was like in ROTC and I was like. <laughs> what? Wow, yeah. look at that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was all, I mean, like, I'm super, I was like, I thought I was going to have a career in the military kind of thing. Like, what? Yeah. Well, if I'd known that, maybe, <laughs> <Yeah>. but. <laughs> this is how Koji plays everything close to the chest until we make a sense and then he's like, bam. But, but the thing is, the thing is, though, I, I, I respect the 4 4. I mean, I respect the no no boys and I really respect what they did and, and, I, I think that, you know, in my heart, like, I know that they were actually the right ones. But I think in my heart, I know, like, what I would have probably had done, you know, if that makes any sense. Like, <sighs> there's not a right answer. No, of course not. Yeah. My answer yeah. would be that I would have. Who would you have been, Tucky? Uh, this is my honest answer. And I'm not trying to bullshit here. Had I been in that situation, I wish I, I, I would hope that I would have the courage to be either one. Because I think they're both yeah. equally brave in different ways. It's kind of like, the difference between like you know martin luther king versus black panther it's like they're both trying to go the same way with different routes and both requiring extreme amounts of courage and and also too like one thing i will say like you know just and i don't know in some ways it's like i don't know 442 a lot of them didn't make it back and then the no, no they didn't we did like shit afterwards so you know i don't know I'd, like I, said, I, I would hope that i'd be brave enough to be one of them well and senator no uh, he said the right he said the best thing was that you know because he was a veteran, right? He was a Medal of Honor winner. Sure. And he said that uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people think the veterans were the brave ones. But in reality, the no-no boys were really the brave ones because they, they families hated them. The yep. communities hated them. And they went to jail. And mm -hmm. they didn't know what was going to happen to them. They could have been sent back that's, to jail, right? So for a lot of people. That's crazy. Because as a hero, as a, as a soldier, it's easy to be like, you're a hero, right? Like, because you fought for, I mean, you come back, you fought, you're a hero. Because it's like, it's, it's, that's almost like a... Yeah, but were they died. but were they really treated like heroes though? No, no. But but yeah, it's exactly. but within the community, no, within the community they were treated. I mean, they're still treated as heroes, but but I, I've never understood that. But you know, but you know, Taki, you made a good point. You, you talked about Martin Luther King and Black Panthers. My analogy would have been Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Yeah, and sure. I would have been a Malcolm X guy. I can tell you that right now. I've I've studied them both extensively, and you know, the way my mother raised me. Malcolm X would have definitely been my guy, and especially since the, and because he was so intelligent, and the fact that he oh, yeah. really realized before his death and, and changed, and that's what got him killed, you know, by his own. I would have, I would have been a Malcolm X guy. <laughs> you know, there's you know? a funny side note. Malcolm X is actually one of the few people that recognizes internment. Like, there's a section in his book. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, you talked about like how like the Japanese this, the Japanese Americans. There's a cool. photo in there too. And you know Yuri yeah. Kochiyama, right? Yeah. You know about Yuri? She's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was the one that was holding his head when uh, when he passed away. But the story started when cause she was working in Brooklyn. I mean, she was working in Harlem. Wait, and when what? Yuri Kochiyama was holding his head when he died. They were friends. Yuri Kochiyama was this Japanese American woman, and when um and it started because Yuri came to or uh, Malcolm came to her house, and then Malcolm and then she said, "I don't I don't like what you say." And then they had this debate there because she was like she's like a she's like a activist and they had this debate and i think they just really respected like she he wasn't she wasn't going to be like you're god or something she's like no no like let's talk and they had this really great talk and they became really really close friends and then when when he died she was there and she's the one that held his heads. is she and, still uh, is she still around no she passed away a couple of years ago but she's like oh, a man someone got her story someone's got to tell no no story. of course she's famous she's really famous so she's a really <laughs> famous activist <Oops>. um <laughs> but <laughs> i knew that Taki, um, tell us tell us how people can follow you, or you, where can people get a where can people see some of your work? I mean, I guess the, you know it's it's funny because I come from the like I, I remember when I first started tattooing, like it was all about tattoo magazines, and you had your portfolio, and people would even steal portfolios at conventions because you know like those photos. And now it's like who has the time? Like people come to our shop, and I'll be like, we have portfolios, but they're all like at least a couple of years old. Just go to Instagram. So that that'd be like you know my Instagram is at State of Grace Taki. Uh, Taki is T A K I. Um, the shop is State of Grace Tattoo, but that's like the quickest, uh, you know, it's instantaneous. Like it's really, yeah. it's almost like that platform was made for tattooers. It's such, you know, it's a quick visual thing and like people can, you know, yeah, so, yeah that would be the easiest way for people to follow what I'm doing. Okay, great. Well, do you have a, you have a YouTube page or anything? A YouTube uh, channel? 
No, I just 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 Instagram and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Real quickly, you mentioned uh, you mentioned a cookbook that your wife was doing. Is it done or is it is it out already? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Knives and Needles. Um, you know, my my wife is a uh, well, she tattoos now, but she was a professional chef for like over fifteen years. And there's definitely a correlation between like um, you know chefs and a lot of famous chefs are really tattooed, heavily tattooed. And I think um, yeah, they are. Her analogy was really good. They're both kind of professions that at one point were looked down upon. And then I think through like pop culture and reality TV, now it's like, you know, chefs are kind of like these superstars. Are, That's a great know, analogy, man. That's a great, yeah. cause chefs are like rock stars now. Uh -huh. dude. And the beauty, yeah. and, the, and, and I'll be honest, like there's been times where I'm like, oh, we want to go to this restaurant, but wait, let's call so-and-so cause he tattooed the owner and see if he can get us in. <laughs> they always do, right? They always do. Yeah, so, and a lot of them are tattooed and we've definitely been very fortunate. And you know, through the course of her career and life, she's met a lot of really interesting chefs and tattooers. So what she did was, you know, did interviews and photo profiles and recipes, and then put it together, uh, put it out on Shift for Publishing. It's called Knives and Needles. Um, look it up yeah. for sure. Yeah. And you can get I'm, on you know, I, Amazon. I'm an, aspiring, I'm an aspiring chef. This is here. Oh, awesome. gr cool. gr gr Grill master. I should say. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and I and my and my Instagram is bry b r a i dash beast. If you ever want to see. Some what I cook. So. <laughs> Sorry, KG. Why are you laughing? You know, here's, here's the thing about here's the thing about doing a podcast with Koji. Every time I leave, I feel like a horrible dad, and I feel like I don't know shit about life. <laughs> well, you're you know when you when you live ninety years, it's oh. you get a lot of you get a lot of wisdom. I am in, not in those ninety, 90 years. close, but I'm not ninety. You, you look great you for hundred. You look great for hundred. But anyway, thank thank you, Taki, so much for coming. It was it was yeah. awesome. Thank you very much. It's been a fun time. And we, yeah, and, this has been great, Taki. And All thank right, you, cool. Martin. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. Please, please tell a friend. Please. And uh, please let, let us know what you think of the show. And please come to our, uh, our social media. So it's Best or Worst Pod on all the different platforms. And uh, say hi to us and let us know if you want to come on the show. Let us know. We'd love, yeah. to, we'd love to talk to you about your best or worst day. Thank you, guys. Exactly. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Talking.